What's up Guardians, and welcome back Titans! We're back at it today with another amazing prismatic build for Titans to use here in Revenant. Today's build is all about maximizing on your damage output, and it revolves around the use of an exotic that just got a major upgrade to its performance, making this one of the absolute best builds for optimal Titan damage whenever facing up against raid and dungeon bosses. At the start of Revenant, there were major adjustments made to both Thundercrash and the Curus of the Fallen Sunstar. This super has been given a 33% increase to its base detonation damage, and at times it honestly seems like it deals more damage than intended. This has boosted the damage potential of Thundercrash far beyond the capabilities of Twilight Arsenal, and it's only matched by the Blade Fury Strand Super, which is a prolonged super that takes away from your ability of using weapons. The combinations of Thundercrash with Star Eaters and Curus were toned down to compensate for the increase in base damage that the Thundercrash deals. This has brought the overall bonus and damage down to 50% whenever using the Star Eaters, and 55% when using the Curus. The Curus saw a few additional adjustments with all of these changes, and it now provides a 7 second damage resistance bonus of 50% after you've landed your Thundercrash. The Glorious Charge Intrinsic Trait now provides additional super energy whenever landing melee final blows, but only when you are amplified. But thankfully for us, we'll be able to maintain our amplified buff almost indefinitely. While amplified is active, we gain increased mobility, increased weapon handling, a speed boost whenever running, and a 15% bonus in damage resistance when that speed boost is active. And with each final blow, we'll generate around 2-4% to bonus super energy. Between the increase in overall damage and the increase in its uptime, the combination of Curus and Thundercrash is better than it's ever been, making this a far superior combination to build around during Revenant. But what is the best way to build around this combination? Well, let's talk about that. When it comes to our prismatic aspects, we are using the combination of Knockout and Consecration, which has become the norm here of late. After a few of its own adjustments, Knockout is much more consistent and provides us with a much better source of ongoing health regeneration, but only when defeating enemies with our powered or unpowered melee. And by defeating enemies with any of our melee options, we'll trigger the Amplified buff so that we can cash in on that bonus super energy. I've really tried to give Diamond Lance and Shiver Strike a chance recently, especially with the synergy that the Crystalline Converter Artifact mod provides, which increases the damage of Stasis melee abilities. But there's just no comparison to the benefits that the Consecration has with Frenzied Blades. We get up to three Consecrations, and each one of those will completely disintegrate an entire room of enemies. So until it gets nerfed, there's no reason to change off of this deadly combination. When it comes to our choice in Grenade, we have chosen to go with the Glacier Grenade, and those will provide us with a few key benefits. These grenades create a wall of ice, which means they can be used as a makeshift barricade to provide you with cover while you res a teammate, or when you need to transition from one area of the battlefield to another. Enemies who are right on top of the Glacier Grenade will become frozen, and when the stasis wall shatters, all nearby enemies will take damage. Because of the use of the Hail the Storm artifact mod, whenever we shatter enemies and crystals, a larger detonation will occur, dealing out more damage. When breaking crystals, tiny little shards of ice will get released and slow down nearby enemies. Being able to slow and freeze enemies will be very harmonious with our use of the Conductive Cosmic Crystal artifact mod, which grants arc and void abilities with a 5% increase in damage. This will get increased to 8% whenever using the corresponding tonic, and that's going to pair up nicely with our use of the Facet of Courage, which gives all of our light-based abilities a 10% bonus in damage against any enemy who's under the effects of a Darkness debuff. So by simply applying Slow or Freeze before slamming our enemies with our Thunder Crash, we'll provide ourselves with as much as an 18% increase in damage. We've got the Facet of Dawn equipped, which is going to grant us with Radiance whenever we strike enemies with our powered melee. Whenever we have Radiance active, our weapons will deal 25% bonus damage, and any weapon that's not already assigned to an Unstoppable or Overload Champion will be able to pierce barrier champion shields. And this bonus in damage will get added in with the 17% bonus in weapon damage that we'll give ourselves by using weapon surge mods. We've got Facet of Protection to give us a 15% bonus in damage resistance whenever we are surrounded by enemies. 
and when we activate our Transcendence, that bonus will increase to 32%, which will significantly improve our ability to stay alive. And since we're using Consecration and Frenzy Blade, we're going to have a ton of melees to help us charge up our super even faster. To ensure that we are able to maintain our Amplified bonus, we are using Facet of Purpose, which grants Amplified whenever collecting Orbs of Power. And by using Facet of Awakening, we'll be able to increase the uptime of our Grenade, Melee, and Class Ability energies. This will cause Elemental Pickups to be generated, and because of how we have this build set up, that's going to generate Stasis Shards, Fire Sprites, and Ionic Traces. Fire Sprites will provide around 10% bonus Grenade energy, with Stasis Shards providing melee energy, and Ionic Traces providing around 12% bonus energy to all three abilities. With the use of the Trace Evidence Artifact mod, we'll be able to generate bonus Ionic Traces whenever landing final blows against enemies who are jolted or blinded. The only ability that we have to cause Jolt is our Transcendent Grenade, but we can include weapons that come with Volt Shot or Jolting Feedback to give us a more reliable source of bonus ability energy. One of my favorite go-to weapons to provide this has been the new Pyro Electric Propellant Auto Rifle, which comes out of the Vesper's Host Dungeon. There's also the Hullabaloo, the Indebted Kindness, and the Vantage Point Pulse Rifle, which would make great alternative options to be able to trigger that Jolt. We are using the Debilitating Wave Artifact mod, which will trigger blinding effects whenever performing our finisher. This will create a wave of arc energy that travels forward, much like a wave frame grenade launcher, and it's going to blind any enemy that's trapped within its wave. The final standout artifact mod that we've got equipped is the Concussive Reload mod, and this will come into play whenever using grenade launchers, as this will provide a 15% weakening debuff against any high-ranking enemy, champion, or boss, and that's going to increase the damage of our weapons, abilities, and our Thunder Crash Super. With Clash Tree and Artifact mods now addressed, let's dive a little bit deeper into our weapon selection. We do have some major incentives towards using grenade launchers and stasis weapons that come with Chill Clip, Headstone, or Cold Steel. The Lingering Dread or the Liturgy would both be fantastic choices to provide both of the debuffs. Otherwise, the Lost Signal Grenade Launcher or Riptide Fusion Rifle would be my recommendations. When it comes to exotic weapons, the Risk Runner is one of my favorite options, as this gives us an overshield to resist incoming damage, but if there's no incoming arc damage, it's pretty useless. And that's when I would turn to a weapon like the Ergo Sum, which also comes with Arc Conductor, or the Trinity Ghoul. But since we are more concerned about dealing maximum damage, the only two sensible options would be the Thunderlord and the Grand Overture. Both of these exotics have proven to be formidable options against just about any dungeon or raid boss, including the new Vesper's Host dungeon boss. But if you need to fit in a legendary heavy weapon instead, then I would recommend using the VS Chill Inhibitor or the Edge Transit Grenade Launchers. Both of these come with Bait and Switch, and that's going to greatly amplify our damage potential. And by adding in the Kinetic Impact Artifact mod, we could give those Grenade Launchers the added benefit of triggering Kinetic Tremors, which would boost their damage output even further. With that said, let's go ahead and switch gears now and take a look at how we want to set up our armor and our armor mods to build around our current setup. When it comes to character stats, it comes down to resilience and strength as the two main stats to focus on. This gives us as much as a 30% reduction in incoming damage, and with tier 10 strength, we'll have the shortest possible cooldown of our melee abilities. Focusing towards intellect would be a good call too, but there are diminishing returns as you climb further up the tier. So by having your intellect at around 30, you should be in a pretty good position. One of the most important armor mods that we're using is Hands-On, which grants bonus super energy whenever defeating enemies with our melee ability. This will stack on top of the bonus energy that the Curus provides to give us our Thunder Crash back much faster. We mentioned earlier that we are using Weapon Surge mods, so to fuel those mods we are using Heavy Handed, Harmonic Siphon, and Reaper mods to be able to create Orbs of Power. Orbs of Power will help us regain our super energy faster, and they'll help keep armor charges active so that we can maintain that 17% bonus in damage. To give ourselves a little bit of a bump in survivability, we have equipped the Recuperation Boots mod, so whenever we collect an Orb of Power, we'll be granted with 70 points of health. So not only is this build giving us incredible damage output, but it's also given us incredible ability uptime. 
And with that, we've covered all the ins and outs of building around a prismatic Curus of the Fallen Sun Star build. This is one of the most powerful Titan builds here in Revenant, and the absolute best at dealing out maximum damage. So if you're a new or returning player looking for a top tier build to take into the new dungeon or any of the other in-game activities, then look no further than the Prismatic Titan with the Curus of the Fallen Sunstar. With that said, I wish you all the best of luck out there. Thank you as always for checking out the video. If you enjoyed and found it helpful, then be sure to hit that like button below, along with the subscribe button if you're new. Both are greatly appreciated and both really do help support the channel. If you need to make a copy of today's build, be sure to check out the Mobilitics link that's down in the description, where you'll be able to find this and a ton of other great in-game builds. And until next time, Guardians, this has been Profane, wishing you all some happy hunting.